Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, August 26th. We have a couple of storms to track today. We've still got Hurricane Franklin in the southwestern Atlantic, which is now strengthening and will recurve east of the U.S., but may be a threat to Bermuda in a few days. We also have newly formed Tropical Depression 10 sitting in the Yucatan Channel, which will stay there for a couple of days and then move northeastward through the Gulf of Mexico and will be a threat to the northeastern U.S. Gulf Coast. And that's the storm we're going to start with today. As it is already impacting land areas as it gets better organized, we can see well-defined rotation here sitting in the Yucatan Channel with rain bands curling into the tight center, impacting western Cuba with heavy rain, as well as the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula with Cancun sitting there on the western side of the circulation. If we look at the radar loop from the Mexican Weather Service, courtesy of Brian McNoldy for putting the animation together, we can clearly see the rotation evident to the human eye here and uh, this is over the last six hours of radar returns, and you can see clumps of deep thunderstorms in yellow and dark green, which have continued to exist around the low-level rotation center, and it's not moving a whole lot, kind of just sitting here east of Cancun over uh, the, the day so far today. Now, the system is a little bit ahead of schedule in terms of organization. Most models didn't anticipate it to be this far along in terms of developing a closed and well-defined circulation just yet, so we are seeing a little bit of a quicker pace of development uh, than models had anticipated. And we can tell that uh, there's not a lot of wind shear right now. We have upper level cirrus spreading away toward the north side as well as toward the south side. So in terms of structure, this is following a typical development pattern and looks pretty good today. It is undergoing a waning phase where thunderstorms have weakened somewhat since the sun rose today, but that's not uncommon in developing systems. And after the sun sets tonight, we'll likely see another round of deep thunderstorm activity near the center and at that point we'll have to see how much more organized it can get during the following 24 hours originally uh, models were expecting a track near or over the northeastern yucatan peninsula and that land interaction was going to slow it down a little bit if it manages to remain over water here during the next 24 to 48 hours that would speed up the development process a little bit so we could have a tropical storm in short order here and if it acquires a name at that point it would be Idalia, the eye storm. If we look at the water vapor satellite loop this is the uh, color RGB product here's TD10 right here uh, just to show that again uh, well fanning outflow in all directions so there's not a lot of wind shear right now this corridor of bluish uh, to the northwest of the storm is all representing low level moisture so there's not really a dry air issue for TD10 at the moment however you go into the northern gulf and there's just green and black, which indicates that there's not a lot of low-level moisture. And the reason this will matter later is because we currently have northeasterly wind over this part of the Gulf of Mexico, which is going to push this dry air closer to TD10 over the next couple of days. We can see this on the European model. This is the initialization. Here's TD10 in the Yucatan Channel, and there's this area of high pressure over Texas and Louisiana, and there's this northeasterly flow, which you can see uh, pushing through the Gulf of Mexico. And, this is going to keep TD10 bottled up in this area for a couple of days. The steering currents are rather weak. Normally, storms are moving northwest or north into the Gulf of Mexico in this location. But right now, TD10 is sitting still, and that's because of this opposing steering flow kind of pushing it down, leaving it here. And so we may actually see this for the next day, day and a half, or even two days, close to the coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula or western Cuba, or just meandering down in the northwestern Caribbean for a second, may even sink southward and then maybe do a little loop and come up through the Yucatan Channel and actually enter the Gulf of Mexico for real. But it's going to take a little bit of time to do that. Now again, this northeasterly flow, which is currently keeping it bottled up, again, that's going to place a lot of the dry air in the way of TD10 over the next couple of days, and that will be key. So you can see the brown colors here. That's the dry air that will eventually get put into TD10's vicinity. Over the next couple of days, what you'll see is a little bit of a drainage of these brown colors southward, and you can see a lot of the green ends up on the south side of TD10, at least on this model. And you can see just a little bit of entrainment here, white and brown colors getting into the core of the system off of Cancun. And again, this is now late Sunday night, early Monday morning. It hasn't moved. It hasn't gone anywhere. And so the key is, as this now enters the Gulf of Mexico for real, what state of organization is it in? On the Euro, it's half a storm. It has this conveyor belt of moisture on the eastern side, but this dry air has really infiltrated in the inner core of the storm. Whether that actually happens is going to be very important for how strong TD10 ultimately becomes. 
because as we found out this morning, TD10 is already better defined, more organized farther along in its development than models like this one expected. So the question is, will that now allow it to generate more moisture by picking it up off the ocean and develop a little bit more quickly? And we can actually see that in the HALFS model, which does show a more well-defined circulation in its latest run because we realized it was there and we're able to tell the model that, hey, there's a stronger vortex here. And uh, that's sitting here southeast of Cancun. And on models like this, this is a high resolution hurricane model meant to simulate the dynamics of developing hurricanes. And it develops more quickly as it sits in the Yucatan Channel over the next 36 hours or so. And so as it enters the Gulf of Mexico, well, now we have something near hurricane strength, a little better able to fight off any dry air entrainment from the western and north side. And so then we see more of a ceiling case for this system, more of a worst case scenario in terms of having a strong hurricane developing in the Gulf of Mexico. That's a risk here that will need to be taken seriously over the next couple of days while we figure out uh, exactly how quickly TD10 will develop. Something that will help a lot, and that's uh, why this run should be taken with a grain of salt for now. We don't have any aircraft plane data. What we're going to have tomorrow is a lot of aircraft flying through the system, taking measurements. Some will be flying in the Gulf of Mexico, dropping drops on, sounding measurements all over the place, and measuring the environmental conditions, plugging that data into these computer models and making them more accurate. We don't have that yet today, and the storm is just now forming, and models typically struggle when storms are young. So after we get past these next 24 hours, we're likely to get greater confidence in the future of this system, but right now, uh, it's a little bit of a watch and wait for the next 24 hours in terms of forecasting U.S. impacts. How quickly does this develop? If it does develop with pace, uh, there is a reason to believe it could become a hurricane and maybe even a strong one if it develops quickly enough, as it will be moving over this tongue of warm and deep water over the Gulf of Mexico. This is the loop current here outlined in yellow, and uh, this is very deep warm water. So a track up into the Gulf of Mexico takes it over this, area of deeply warm water which would fully support hurricane development and it does drop off near the continental shelf uh, but the surface water is still warm so more than warm enough to support a strong hurricane at that point now in terms of the track if we look at the upper level flow here on the european model uh, right now we see this upper level ridge over the system again healthy outflow there's a little bit of an upper level trough over the north gulf coast and uh, over the next couple of days again this is bottled up near the yucatan uh, but the upper level trough eventually digs in a little bit more and we get a little bit more troughing over the central U.S. in general. And eventually what happens is uh, this ridge over the storm kind of sinks back to the southwest and opens up this lane of flow aloft out of the west or southwest through the Gulf of Mexico, which will then pick the storm up and move it northeastward toward the eastern U.S. Gulf Coast. And so this is the general kind of track we're expecting. Again, it's not going to be going off to the northwest here, not with a big trough like this over the southern U.S., so the lanes will be either north or northeast. Exactly where a potential landfall may occur, again, confidence still going to be a little fuzzy here in the early going while the storm is still young, but with all of the aircraft data that we're about to get over the next 24 to 36 hours, we'll probably hone in on the steering flow and exactly where this will go um, with more confidence uh, here in a day or a day and a half. We can see this moving toward Florida Panhandle on this model, and there is a little bit, perhaps, of wind shear associated with this upper level flow, uh, but the primary belt uh, of uh, jet stream core is to the northwest of the storm. So in general, shear is likely to be light. It's not likely to be strong. Conditions are likely to be generally favorable. The fly in the ointment in terms of uh, keeping the storm potentially weaker is if it does get a lot of that drier entrainment that we talked about here on this model run, which does still allow the storm to strengthen, but at a slower pace uh, than some of those high resolution models that we saw earlier that made it a stronger storm. This is the GFS Ensemble a spread of possible track forecasts, and this is not an exact set of possible futures, but it gives you an approximation of what the uncertainty currently is in the track. And you can see that because of the meandering over the first couple of days, there's a variety of launching points into the Gulf that this could take. And depending on how far east or west it is at that launching point across the Gulf, that kind of determines whether it makes landfall farther west or farther east. Right now, Florida seems to be the target in most of the model solutions, but really the entire, from the central Gulf Coast all the way down uh, the Florida coastline should be keeping a close eye on this for potential impacts 
keeping in mind that a heavy rainfall, flash flooding, and storm surge could extend well to the east and north of this track, regardless of the exact track of the center. So something to keep in mind going forward. We have our first advisory from the National Hurricane Center showing again a couple days of really not going anywhere. So this is currently Saturday afternoon as of this recording. By Monday afternoon, it's right here. So it really doesn't move. We have a tropical storm warning for Cancun and surrounding areas of the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, tropical storm watch for the western part of Cuba. Then finally, after Monday afternoon, we see the track accelerate toward the north and the north-northeast, and you can see it become a hurricane black letter H by Tuesday afternoon. Now, this is meant to be a best estimate of the most likely future from the National Hurricane Center. In reality, uh, there's some fuzziness around that value. So this could be a stronger storm by this point. It is possible if we see something more robust develop in the Yucatan Channel earlier, then we could see a hurricane earlier and therefore a stronger hurricane later prior to landfall. So it's as you look at this forecast now, uh, prepare as if a strong hurricane could form in the eastern Gulf. Until we can rule that out, it's worth being prepared just in case this becomes strong. Even though right now it's forecast to be a Category 1 hurricane, which can still cause problems, it could end up being stronger. So it's worth being prepared, have a plan in place, just in case we're talking about Tuesday night or Wednesday morning for landfall currently on the timing of this particular forecast. However, because of the shape of the Florida coastline, for example, if it comes farther to the right, say into the Tampa area on the right-hand side of this forecast cone, the landfall would be earlier because it's a shorter distance from here to there than it is to, say, Apalachicola. So there will be some fuzziness on the timing as well. Again, the storm is young, has just now formed, so we're just now learning some of the data that is necessary uh, to really uh, give models a good idea of what's happening uh, with the vortex as it begins its development as a tropical cyclone. But intensification is in general expected and conditions are favorable. So everyone stay safe and be prepared over the coming days. Now we're going to switch over to the other hurricane that we need to talk about. This is Hurricane Franklin east of the Bahamas. Here's the storm. There's the Bahamas in orange to the southwest. And you see a much more organized system than we had yesterday. We're entering that favorable phase where conditions are now allowing intensification. We even have a dimpled eye trying to form a little bit of dry slotting happening as dry air rotates around the south and east side. But compared to yesterday, the system was fully exposed and sheared. And now we see a hurricane inner core beginning to form. So intensification has begun apace. Current winds estimated at 85 miles per hour by the National Hurricane Center. This is the larger picture water vapor loop again showing the Bahamas here. Here's Franklin and we've been talking about this for days. This upper level low to the west has now backed away to the southwest. The upper level trough has been uh, pinched into two pieces. And now we see upper level outflow expanding freely to the north and to the east. And this upper level low to the west is now going to pivot Franklin toward the northwest. And uh, we're going to see this hook to the left in the track and then a hook back to the right because we have upper level mid-latitude westerlies on the north side of your screen. And so eventually this this low will lose its ability to influence Franklin's track and we'll see this pivot toward the right as it enters the river of left to right flow at the top of your screen. Now the track has shifted a little bit and uh, there's, there's actually been a sizable change in most of the model guidance over the last 24 hours. We talked yesterday about how this trough in about three days on Tuesday night moving into New England is going to be one of the primary steering features lifting Franklin northeastward on a recurvature track. One of the things that has changed is this trough is now a little bit faster to swing through on model forecasts, which is now flattening out this jet stream on some of these runs and this ridge between Franklin and Tropical Depression 10 down here has been getting a little bulgier off of the Carolinas. So again, a little bit more of a westerly zonal steering flow hitting the hurricane from the left. So if I go back here, you'll see the storm come up to the northwest, but then what you'll see is a little bit of a sharper turn toward the right. So it ends up taking uh, this hooking track just to the north of Bermuda, which is right here on your screen. And it was true yesterday that the storm was much farther to the north of the island. But because this trough is faster, we have all this almost west to east steering flow. So we see a less northerly track and a sharper hook to the right. This has been quite a change. If you uh, look at the last several model runs, I'll show you each run valid 
on late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, and you'll see where the hurricane was on some of yesterday's runs and where the hurricane is now on today's runs. So the slower movement of Franklin combined with the faster trough uh, is leading to the sharper right hook. And this is unfortunately not great news for Bermuda as now the model guidance has kind of come around to that sharper turn. Here's Bermuda. And yesterday, most of the model guidance was farther to the left, close to Atlantic Canada. But now we see this track farther south. And because of that, even though Franklin may end up pretty far from Bermuda when it's due west of the island, this turn to the right could bring it north of Bermuda and closer to the island. That doesn't mean it's going to go over the island. We don't know if this track trend will continue, but it's not great because now it could bring at least the tropical storm conditions right over the island. And now there's a, a greater risk today for hurricane conditions in Bermuda than there was over the last couple of days. So this is the National Hurricane Center forecast, which has followed suit following the model guidance. Instead of going this way, it's now bending toward the right uh, faster and Bermuda is still outside of the cone of uncertainty for where the eye is most likely to travel but again the wind field which is in orange here is going to continue to grow and as, as it's passing north of Bermuda we could see hurricane force winds pretty far south and tropical storm force winds on this track may be overlapping the island at this time so it'll be worth watching over the next couple of days to see if uh, warnings and watches uh, for at least tropical storm conditions are issued for the island and if we continue to see a track trend toward a sharper right hand turn if that gets closer to bermuda we could be talking about hurricane conditions as uh, the the storm will be strong franklin will have winds in excess of 100 miles per hour during this track conditions are now favorable and we could see a very strong healthy looking hurricane during its closest approach to the island so stay safe in bermuda and be prepared just in case over the next few days that's about it for this video. We'll continue to watch Franklin, like we mentioned, and TD10 will be moving into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Everywhere from the North Gulf Coast to the Florida Panhandle to the Florida Peninsula should be keeping a close eye on this as it could develop quickly over the next few days, so we need to be ready just in case it does. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.